What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined, as always, by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, and Matthew Spineauer and Theo Ash. We have a great episode planned for you all today. We're going to start things off hot uh, uh, with special guest YouTuber Bangle. Uh, it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great interview. I can promise you that much. We're going to do a little bit of NBA talk. I know Matt and Theo have some things to say about the, the Celtics and, uh, then we're going to talk about a little bit of week 18 because most of the games are going to suck, but there is one game that everyone's talking about and we'll make sure to hit on it as well. But before we get into all of that, Matt, Theo, how are y'all doing today? I'm splendid. Uh, I got a new computer set up. And um, and I helped you with you it. Help, you helped me with that because it, <laughs> I put in some new RAM and it, it wasn't working well. But I'm trying out these curved monitors. And um, I don't know if it really looks any different or if it's just like a placebo effect type deal because I know they're curved. But I feel much cooler. Um, <laughs> so it's worth it right there. Look good. Feel good. Podcast good. That's what they all say. I feel good yeah. right now. So... I don't know what else to say. Uh, it's negative. I don't know how, what the weather is like in Ohio right now, but it's about negative 13. Snowing. It's about negative 13 in Minnesota right now. So I'm, uh, you know, feeling cold a little bit during the daytime, but typical day in, typical yeah. day in Minnesota. Yeah. It's I've got cold, a, it, it snowed a little bit here. It's just that right temperature to snow, but it's not like too terribly cold. And I had like, you know, I got my big window in front of me. Um, I get to see the city and like snowfall. It's been pretty cool. So weather's good here. As far as snow weather goes. Not here. Not here. I'm, I, I'll be back in Phoenix in a couple of days. I'm going to have a little bit of shock going from negative. How warm to, is it in Phoenix this time of year? Oh, it's nice. It's about 60, 60 degrees, uh, oh, 50, 60, 70, I gotta know how somewhere to dress. in that range. All right. Dress, dress, don't yeah, dress too like, oh, it's going to be gorgeous, sunny, like bring bring maybe some long sleeve stuff but you're not going to need any kind of like winter jacket or anything that's for sure it's like a brisk fall day it's like a brisk fall day that's what phoenix winter is you. like <laughs> i feel you i feel you well before we get into everything else would like to remind everybody to go rate us on spotify the spotify ratings first of all we're pulling like some of the best spotify ratings i've ever seen in like the sports i know it's not been out very long but like we have over a thousand ratings. In a yeah, you guys are crushing style. it with that. Um, <laughs> like, it's super, super, that, that's super been, cool. That's been say. insane. It is I, awesome. I, I want to say the only sports podcast I've seen pull better numbers than that is, I think, Pardon My Take. I think that might be it. Yeah. Shout out. Um, shout so out that, you guys. That's really, shout out the fans. Shout out the Stay Hot community. It's been incredible. Also, make sure you follow us on TikTok at Stay Hot Pod for some great content there as well. We're almost at 100K. We had a video get taken down today. Um, but it, it got, I, I appealed it and it's back up. So it, we don't get a strike on our account. It was the video of Theo, uh, if we, if Theo should get a haircut. So everyone's wondering, Theo, did you report that video? Dude, I was so, <laughs> so tempted to delete that tweet at like 600 likes just to be a. <laughs> I was, like, get, I, yeah. this, but, um. I was about to get a haircut right before I left, um, but I was my friend got COVID, so I didn't know if I had it yet. So I got tested and I had to cancel my haircut while I was waiting for my results. I was negative, but I was about okay. to get a haircut anyway, so I was not really too concerned about that. I that want you to go like shoulder length, man. I think it should I, have been the opposite goal. I think so too. I I would like it to thin out. I'll probably get a haircut, but I don't know how notice it'll be, notice. It's not going to be anything drastic, so that's how I'm going to skate it. But anyway, yeah, it's like okay. that's what's funny about it, is like how many likes for Theo to trim his hair half an inch. It's yeah, like, no, it's it's not going to be anything crazy. <laughs> You're not anyway, going that, that tweet got over a thousand likes though. Killed it did. It. it did. Killed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but without further ado, I say we introduce the other co-host of the day, Bangle. Well, it is my honor to officially introduce our guest of the week, Bangle. How are you doing, my guy? Doing well. Thanks for having me. I've seen some of you guys around, so it's it's nice to uh, be recognized and get to hop on. It's nice to have you. You know, um, we were going to make the joke um, and ask if you're a Bengals fan, but we figured you probably get that a lot. <laughs> well, if you're going to introduce the fact that you were going to make the joke and then say what it is, it, it accomplishes the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, dude, big Bengals fan. I, I don't. I hate the Giants, so might as well be. 
Yeah. You do hate the Giants. Um, <laughs> uh, I looked up your Twitter and like, I was trying to figure out like, is he a bank? I, I think that he is a Giants fan. So I looked up like hate him. times you've mentioned the Giants and like all the tweets are like, the Giants are atrocious. I hate this team. I should be the quarterback. Can't wait to watch. Them I don't know that I would have said that. Prime but time. You probably you wouldn't did. be so bad as Daniel Jones. <laughs> Oh, did I? Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I think you did. So I was like, oh, yeah, no, he's a, I, I've he's said a Giants the same fan. Thing. I've said the same thing with Baker. Like, I could probably do – like, there's no way that he's that bad. I, but Baker, is. Baker's tough. I I don't know. I feel like tearing your labrum and that – I feel like with all the guys that play through injuries, and even though it's not his throwing shoulder, it's like we just expect him to be, oh, it's just a torn labrum. But if I tore my labrum, I don't even know if I could make a YouTube video. <laughs> so, I mean, we expect him to be this elite quarterback. He he has been overwhelmingly terrible. Uh, am I allowed to swear on this? Oh yeah, go for it. Well, yes. I won't. <laughs> no, uh, no, he's been he's been pretty shitty. Um, but you know, I I honestly think, and I've been thinking about this, and I'm like, I'm gonna keep this one to myself for a while. But I might as well say it here. If the Giants could get Baker for like a mid round pick, maybe even as high as a second, I'm I'm in. Honestly, because I think there's something there. L- listen, rookie year Baker, third year Baker, I'm in. Second year Baker with Freddie Kitchens, I'm out. And this Baker, I'm out. But, you know, who knows? It's every other year. All so, you have to do is have a good team every other year. Oh, there's get a, there's a lot of talented wide receivers in New York to blame if things don't go right for him there. So, um, <laughs> Odell kind of threw think, him under the bus with the torn labrum. Because right think, after that came out, the, one sec. Right after his torn okay. labrum news came out, Odell like immediately said, "Well, I've been playing with a torn labrum for like fifteen years. It's not years. a big deal." So, yeah. yeah, so like he kind of like that kind of affected that excuse a little That's, bit. I thought that, that, that was like Odell's a different animal. He is. He, he is. played. What was it? Twenty? Was it twenty eighteen? His second year, maybe it was his first year in Cleveland. Hernia the entire year put up a yes. thousand yards. I can't remember what year yes. that was. Yes, he did do that. So that, I mean, that's it, crazy. Yes, yeah. some guys Odell's, are just built different. Odell's a freak. Odell is a freak. Um, here, here's a question for you: How do you like survive playing Madden, like as much as you do? Because I tried, my head? I, I tried that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried that lifestyle, and it's painful. Yeah, the game's um, the game's bad. Like. Well, there's a reason I don't play online. I think everyone expects, like, they think Madden, they think Ultimate Team nowadays, or, yeah. like, playing people. I haven't played an online game of Madden, with the exception of the Creators Franchise League that lasted two weeks. Uh, I haven't played an online game of Madden against a random person in four or five years. So I have no interest in, in Madden, really. I just play make-believe GM uh, with Madden and the, do the Just trash smart. simulating. You're smarter than I was. Yeah, I was. There, you gotta you gotta find a workaround. I'm like I hate playing the game. It's not like real football. <laughs> How can I, I get around that? <laughs> well, I play in the menus. That's what I do, do you think? Do you think? I, I I love the Madden simulations because it's like they'll draft like a guard first, or when they already have like three guards, and like all the franchises become like completely unrealistic and unplayable in like five years what do you think your favorite like football game of all time has been do you think it's getting any better or are you nostalgic for old ones or what are your what are your thoughts on like the best one ever or even sports game in general maybe yeah i don't know it's tough i like i feel like everyone's kind of partial to the first game they really played i was never huge into video games growing up but i had a I got a PS2 and I got Madden 07 with Sean Alexander on the cover. And that's kind of like peak nostalgia, superstar mode, which hasn't existed for a decade, pretty much. That was a lot of fun. But as I got older, I just don't really care to do the like make believe what if I was an NFL player anymore? Because here I am, I'm 23 and there are NFL players who are younger than me, who are significantly better athletes and better at sports, obviously. So I don't know. It's just kind of, it's kind of weird as I, I got older. It's like, I just don't really have an interest. So what if I was a pro athlete? I'm not. I, I, like, here I am. There's no, yeah. like, growing up fantasy anymore because I'm grown up, I, I guess. guess. that's fair. It's like have they done anything to fix the salary cap 
becoming a nightmare after like two seasons? Is it still the same where everyone will have no money or a bunch of money and then there's just like you know, random like 85 overalls who are free agents? Yeah, I, I mean, I want to say that's partially a you problem because, I mean, I've played <laughs> – I've played more <laughs> franchise than like anybody. And uh, you, you here's the thing. Here, here's the thing is because what everyone wants to build a super team. But uh, the only difference to real life is that teams manipulate the salary cap all the time. Like the Saints and the Rams are just like, well, you're going to take all the salary and that's a bonus now, which you can't really do in Madden. But uh, there's got to be a way to limit the super teams. So you can't just give everybody what they're actually worth. So if you give, you know, a million, $15 million contracts out there, like you, you can't have everybody getting paid over 10 mil per year. You won't have a team. Yeah. I say that right. I, I may have, I don't know. <laughs> well, all I heard Going- was that Matt is the worst GM of Madden. So <laughs> this happens to you too. Bladen, you were sitting there agreeing with me just a second ago. And then he's like, yeah, it's your there- fault. And Bladen's like, yeah, it's this guy. Uh, I didn't say it like that. No, listen, there are, there are some things that need no, to be changed. Like some of the older players that are higher overall do end up just sitting in free agency, but it's not for a long amount of time. I feel like that was something they definitely cleaned up in one of the more recent versions of the game. Like there are a ton of problems, but I don't know that that one is at like, the top of the list for me. I haven't really seriously played Madden since Madden 16. It's a good move. I kind of killed it for me with the aggressive <laughs> catch. The aggressive catch. It's not like that anymore. Madden 16 was the only time when you could put up 300 yards a <laughs> no, game with Herman Moore with aggressive catch. <laughs> I do now the only aggressive Kittle. catches by the uh, the corners because my receivers don't feel like playing <laughs> yes, football. They kind of George Kittle, that's the thing about Madden. Matter. They always over they always over adjust. Like one thing will be a problem, and then the next year it's like way underpowered, or one thing is way underpowered, and then the next year it's like way overpowered. That's one thing I've noticed with them. Here's the secret. That's how they make the gameplay feel new. Fair. Mm. They got to do it yeah. some way. So moving on from Madden and you are not only pick a struggle, dude, not only do you have to play Madden for a job, you're also a New York Giants fan, uh, which over the past couple of days with Joe Judge just like lying and like that one offensive lineman stealing cafeteria food and everything. It's it's a little bit of a train wreck. Yeah. What do you want yeah, to see? Play, but- yeah, he didn't play. He just like showed up and ate all the food and didn't run my abs and now he's cut <laughs> that was dude i read that today i'm like that is the funniest thing he brought golf clubs i'm like you don't even play on the team and you're bringing golf clubs into the locker room for what for what i have no idea fun you Great. say it having a good time Great. what would you do yeah. if you were the giants and like the god of the giants and could reshape the team in your image like do you have a plan i mean i i wish um I, I think it's tough because you do have to, you got to hit on draft picks. That's the biggest thing. Teams are built through the draft and then finish through free agency or acquisitions, we'll say, with trades. So, I mean, obviously, I would hit on the draft picks. I wouldn't even miss on a player, obviously. Um, no, I, I don't know. It's tough. I, I think the biggest issues the Giants have right now are, well, obvious lack of talent, which cannot be overcome through the coaching staff they have currently, the best teams are the best teams every year because of the coaching, not necessarily the players in the team. You look at the Steelers, uh, you know, they're a team that has been successful for the past decade plus, you know, and, and then some because of coaching. Bill Cowher moved into Mike Tomlin. And the Browns, they trick me every year because I go, this is the year. The Browns have all the talent. And then it hasn't, uh, you know, met through their record because they don't have the coaching staff to put those players in the position to succeed. And I thought Kevin Stefanski was turning them around last year, but here they are this year. And even Kevin Stefanski can't overcome Baker Mayfield, man. (laughs) It's part of it. I know uh, Eli and Peyton were talking about working Baker more off play action, which to me makes a lot of sense because they have arguably the best running back in the league. And definitely the best one-two punch when Kareem Hunt is healthy. Why don't they work Baker off play action more and work the short game? I kind of don't understand it, but I don't know. That's why I'm not a coach, I guess. They were doing it last year. I don't know the numbers of of how much they were doing it this year. But yeah, I I look at Baker and I look at like the problems he had his as a rookie and the ones he had now and they're the same issues and like that is like a coaching thing that you didn't like fix those issues and it's a bit of a baker thing as well but it's a mess i mean although the one thing i will say the one if i the can browns say one had the thing fourth best baker. record <laughs> yes 
Go ahead. I can say one thing about Baker. Were you going to say they have the fourth best record in the AFC North? No, no. I was going to say they have the fourth best record that they've ever had since moving back to Cleveland. So this is actually one of their best seasons. So congratulations <laughs> to the Browns. Yes. Congratulations. No, but here's, here's the thing with Baker. My theory is that Kevin Stefanski is like Sean McVay and he just wants to do more. It's like, oh, well, they should just run more off play action. I should be able to trust my quarterback to be able to do more than just run play action. And I think he's feeling like McVeigh with golf, where he's like, man, if I could just do a little bit more. But that's, yes. that's all. That's how I feel about him. But I yeah, digress. a divorce there wouldn't surprise me. But enough about the Browns to the Giants. Yes. Here's one question. <laughs> oh, I yeah. I kind of totally like, maybe, didn't yeah, answer your question did. at all. <laughs> how about Russ? Russell Wilson is one guy that's like always linked there. Would you be pro or against like trading a lot for Russ in the, in the idea, like, or like the, the theory of having Russell Wilson, the idea of it sounds awesome, but how are the giants different than the Seahawks? They have the same strengths, pretty much same weaknesses, weak offensive line. Their receiving core is fairly good if they were ever to be healthy. And then defensively, they're atrocious at times in a different areas of the field. So how are the giants different than the Seahawks? It's just another Seattle in New York. So I don't, I want Russell Wilson. I don't want to trade, you know, all your potential future to get him because I don't think you're in a different spot. We've seen with Seattle, it's not working out this year. So, yeah, I'm, I'm out a little on bit that. lower. I'm a little bit lower on the Giants trading for Russell Wilson. It's just it would cost a lot and would cost a lot against the cap. And they're not. It's if they were right there, it would be one thing. But you're still sitting here like they need a lot of offensive line. They need a lot of defense. Um. So the assets you'd have to give up to get them probably make it tough. It would be uh, multiple first round picks at least, yeah. which you just can't afford to give up. Would you be willing to swallow the moral obligation of trading for Deshaun Watson? <laughs> I, I think it's the same. I think Russell Wilson's a better quarterback, and I, I think it's still going to cost a lot to get him. So I think it's the same situation. The Giants, unfortunately, just have to kind of bite the bullet and say, we're going to suck again. But which has been no different than the last decade, so I'm cool with it. I guess I'll lie to myself. Uh, <laughs> you think I, you just got to wait until 2023, and that's the unfortunate reality. Try to get pieces in place for a quarterback to be successful, and then get a quarterback. Just get a bridge QB veteran. Maybe it's Jameis. Maybe it's Mariota. God, uh, you know, it's, it's somebody that. That doesn't have Someone to be different. the guy right away. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm hearing a lot of, th- I mean, at least 10 different teams have uh, been talking about, or at least fan base has been talking about, oh, we got to wait for 2023. And if as many teams wait for 2023 <laughs> as it seems like are going to, someone is going to tank for a year yeah. and not come away with a quarterback. Yeah, Houston and Jacksonville remain dumpster fire situations. And the Giants are awful but they're just good enough to not be in play for a Bryce Young or CJ Stroud so it's so we'll see it's it's not great but we'll see we'll see what happens do you think they'll keep Gettleman and Judge Gettleman is gone uh, as soon as the season ends I think and reportedly Joe Judge is sticking around for another year which doesn't really make any sense to me because a new GM is going to want a head coach that he hired so and they want to stick with Daniel Jones another year too. It's just a team that's that doesn't know what they want to do, and that's the worst spot to be because you don't commit one way or the other. You're going to be in the middle and still not winning. So they're just in a the Panthers awful spot. The Panthers are in a very similar situation, <laughs> except without the draft picks. Um, we want Rule gone too, and it seems like he's going to stay another year. And then we've dealt with Gettleman before. Yeah, yeah. The same. <laughs> Matt and Bangle, you you should be able to sympathize with each other a little bit. You know what's yeah. funny about it is that Gettleman, like I when he, he was with the Panthers, his two big mistakes were like drafted a running back high, signed Matt Khalil for a ton of money. He was a terrible tackle, and then he goes to the Giants and he drafts a running back really high, and then he goes and signs <laughs> Nate Soldier for a ton of money. He made the like exact same mistakes. Um, so I'm not super I, high on him. I think third time's the charm. If yeah. I were a team out there, I'm hiring Dave Gettleman. <laughs> I'm drafting <laughs> Kenneth running Walker. back. I'm drafting Kenneth Walker, top ten, and uh, and then I'm paying. Oh I don't know, Deion Dawkins. No, he's on the contract. <laughs> I don't know. 
He's all right. <laughs> Deion Dock, he's good. He's good, to be fair. Yeah, but, uh, gonna, he's going to Who's like a like... fringe? DJ Humphreys, he's another guy that's paid. I don't know. Whatever. Cam Robinson's whatever a free agent this year. That's, that's the one. <laughs> that's it. Cam Robinson, that's the one. <laughs> Kenneth Walker and Cam Robinson combining in, uh, <laughs> I don't know Lord. where. Once they fire Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence, Jacksonville, Dave Gettleman. Go. Jacksonville's going to pay Cam what Robinson. They need is another Eaton, running back James Robinson and No, it's 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 it has Texans all over it. It's exactly what that's going to be. They they uh I don't know, Laramie Tunsil will right tackle. I don't know. The I don't Texans know. Something and the like motivational speaker of of a <laughs> executive yeah, he's, like He's a freaking <laughs> see something else. Okay. Yes. So what did what did you want the Giants to do in the last draft? I assume there was like you're sitting there and you're like, did you want Justin Fields? Um, I, I think Justin Fields was a really good prospect. I would have been okay with it, uh, for sure. I think he's really good. Who did I want the Giants to take? I wanted Jalen Waddle more than anything. They weren't in position. Ooh. Um, Waddle would have been nice. What did I want? They were picking at what? They were eleven, it, and then they moved was, back to twenty. Yes. Yes. D- One guy, Bengal, I remember I said that he was good and a bunch of people were like, they mentioned you as the only other person caping for this guy. Greg Rousseau was, that, am I right about that? That you were a Greg Rousseau, the only other Greg Rousseau stan? Was that you? No, I thought my- he was, uh, I have a video on my channel that says he's uh, disappointing. Which okay. Uh, as soon as he made a tackle in the preseason, I had comments. Bet you feel like an idiot now. <laughs> like, are, yeah, so the guy? Yeah, I think maybe like it was that franchise guy then. So now I feel like an I feel like more of a moron for assuming it was you. But once someone said it, no, but anyway, I, I, I thought Rousseau was going to be a monster because I, you know, I, I looked at a uh, at highlights going into yes. the season, and then I go, oh, he's not too bad. And then I I turned on the actual film and I go, okay, he's a good run defender. He's not twitchy at all. He has long arms, but he's not really a good pass rusher. He has no plan and just kind of goes in there blind. He's like, all right, I'm going to run through you. But he's not particularly strong, at least in terms of uh, a base. He's kind of like lanky. I know I'm the last one to be calling anyone lanky, but uh, by <laughs> far, like, you know, as far as uh, defensive end standards, he, he was. So I'm like, I don't really know what you have here. So cause people were calling him a top five guy before early, uh, real that early, season. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, he's yeah. not a top five player when I actually looked at him. And uh, then he dropped in the draft. And of course, I wasn't saying, oh, Rousseau sucks. He's not worth any pick. But of course, it's like you either think a player is great or terrible and there's no in between with uh, social media. So no, I I thought Rousseau was bad as far as like top player standards go. Yeah, I was not for him. Okay, okay. Okay. I was someone was. I I can't remember. Trading down and getting the extra pick is. Yeah, I I was in favor of that. It's far from bad. And, yeah, and I don't mind the Tony, Tony pick. I liked it at the time. I, I still kind of feel okay about it. Uh, I liked him to be, I think, receiver five in the class, but it was a good receiver class. And if you had a creative offensive coordinator, not Jason Garrett, I think you would have been able to utilize him in a bunch of different ways, but they didn't do that. How and, did you uh, rank he the top? couldn't stay healthy. How did you rank the top of the last class? And what are your thoughts on like Waddle and Smith and Chase now after a year? I had I had Waddle as receiver one. I had him real close with Jamar Chase. I just think they do different things. And it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Uh, I didn't think Jamar Chase was going to be quite as fast as he has looked at times for the Bengals this year. And I, I value the deep speed of Waddle and what he makes a defense do more than anything because he's going to space out the defense He's going to require bracket coverage, and that's going to create a ton of opportunities for other receivers. Now, the Dolphins don't care about that. They will (laughs) throw only screen passes and only quick hitters. And then so Jalen Waddell, who is already probably a top five fastest player in the league, averages fewer than 10 yards per catch, which is unbelievable. And Jamar Chase, who I still thought was amazing, has been amazing, but I, I had him as receiver too. Then I had Devontae Smith, who is awesome, but I just thought he was just a step down. And then I believe I had maybe Kadarius Tony. No, I had Rashad Bateman, Kadarius Tony, Elijah Moore as my top six, if I recall. That's pretty good. I mean, That's a, I, I think was, I like Ch- that list a lot. Yeah, that, that, that aged well. My thing with Chase was always like, oh man, separation for him was just a little bit scary to me because he played a little bit like 
Des Bryant or something like that. And he was like six yeah, feet Von tall Bolden type thing. And like with Nikhil Harry, I was like, I, that was the one thing I still had. Him, I missed I on him. I missed on Nikhil Harry. And then I, I, I said never again. And then I started yes. valuing separators over guys who were physical at the catch point, like chases. That's where I was just, underrated. too much of a toss up. I underrated chase in the draft. And I think I had him as slight. I had him as wide receiver four, but I think he was still a top 15 player. But there were just so many good wide receivers. And I think I went Smith, yeah. Waddle, Bateman, who I thought was crazy good at separation, and then Chase. And yeah, that aged bad because Chase is clearly I, and I, the best I of all. I went Smith, that. Waddle, Chase, Bateman, I think. Maybe yes. I, did I have, And Terrace I Marshall. I, I love Terrace Marshall. He was right behind Chase for me, but he's a healthy scratch now. That is very uh, sadly. You know who? Uh, you guys know Brett Coleman, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. He's a big yeah. Terrace Marshall guy. You know who he sold me on, who is now uh, going to do murder time probably, is Tamori and Terry. He was big on him. Uh, and then he yeah, killed somebody oh, with remember, uh, Travis Rudolph. I remember all the hype he got. Oh, well, he's um, a really big, really fast uh, deep threat. He, I think people saw him as a DK Metcalf clone type. Did he go undrafted? Yeah, because he murdered or somebody. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll do it's, it. Turns out that is a red start. flag. That that'll draft your draft stock a bit. You might be a day three guy. You're gonna yeah. do capital murder. So Bengal, your oh, wide receiver yeah. takes last year aged pretty well. Do you have any first impressions of the guys, and really just maybe not wide receiver, but like in any of the like first first impressions of the 2020 class in general, like? Starting to scout them at 20, all. 2020 class? 2022. Or, my bad. My okay. bad. Because uh, I'm like, are we going back? Yeah. yeah. Way back. Um, I way really back. I really haven't done a lot. I really don't like to say anything before I actually dive in. It takes forever. Yeah. And with YouTube, the grind is from like, I guess for me, like late August until January 1st. And then January, February becomes draft season. And I'll actually dive into the class, you know, one by one, probably look at uh, depending on position, like 15 to 40 to 50 guys, depending on what it is per position. So uh, that takes a really long time. And I just haven't really looked at too many guys. Looked at Corral because uh, <laughs> I saw your tweet response. Like, All right, now I got to look at Corral. <laughs> I, love um, I, I only saw him against Arkansas. Oh, God. And That's like the worst possible that, game to watch. 2019 or 20, where, last year or this, this year? Pa- the only, the only okay. all 22 okay, I have for, for 2021 oh, okay. is Arkansas. Okay. So that's the only one I watched. I don't really have too many concerns. Like, he missed, he missed some throws um, just trying to get the ball out real quick. The Ole Miss offense is designed primarily around, around RPO and, and quick hitters. So it's really tough to evaluate a quarterback from that perspective when the entire offense is based on, I don't want to say predetermined reads, but really you're throwing a one guy if it's an RPO or you're going to keep it. Yeah, run guy, take off. The deep ball trails behind a little bit at times. It's tough to say. Need to watch more. Really haven't actually you know, dived into the class other than actually watching the guys play this season. Who do I like quite a bit? I like Ojabo's potential, but he's a project. Uh, I still have Kayvon Thibodeau as edge one. I know a lot of guys have Hutchinson over after his big season. Who else? Let me. You like pull. Burks. What Burks I've yeah. seen you tweet about, and he's very intriguing to me. I have not watched him yet, but that guy is kind of a monster. Yeah, he's like if Debo Samuel was 6'3", which is, I think, <laughs> pretty a, fun. That is fun. Yeah. I uh, yeah. Kyle Hamilton. I've seen a little bit. I think oh, he's incredible. I love Kyle. Hamilton. Uh, these are just like top of the top guys. Andrew Booth Jr. I watched last year because I okay. uh, was I was watching. It was Darian Kendrick at the start, and then he got kicked off the team. But Andrew <laughs> Booth Jr. flashed a ton. I like him a lot. I mean, obviously, if you've seen any football this year, you've watched Jamison Williams dominate and watched Roger McCreary dominate for Auburn. I think my biggest under the radar guy, though, this this only other guy I've watched so far, and I've actually done in depth on him, is Trayvon Walker out of Georgia. Goes a little bit under the radar on that Georgia team. Isn't named Jordan Davis or Nicobe Dean. Really, really good. Moves really well in space for someone that's six five two seventy. So I, I like Trayvon Walker a lot. I think he's a name that's Which probably going to rise he? up a lot. He's I would call him a five tech. He's, okay. 
defensive end. Okay. I think he can play in a three four or a four three, but also he moves like an outside linebacker. He's he's going to be a lot of fun. He's going to go high just because he can do whatever you want. I would just take everyone on that Georgia defense high. I think that's what my strategy would be. <laughs> They're all f- freaks. They're freaky, mm-hmm. freaky people. One more draft question: What is a guy who who is a a prospect that maybe is hit that you're like most proud of that you were like, I scouted this guy and he hit and everyone's everyone said he wouldn't. They said like, or he was a sleeper. Do you have like a guy that you're like really proud of the evaluation and like how it's translated? The, the guy that comes to mind first is Brian Burns. He was a first rounder. So it's not like a, a home run type thing. Cause it's not like I, you know, I found this guy. Nobody believed him and not even the league, but I would have taken Brian Burns. And there's a lot of footage of me saying this, even on draft night, I would have taken Brian Burns at number six overall, and then they took Daniel Jones, and I cried. <laughs> no, I, but Brian Burns, I think, is an incredible player. I loved him at Florida State. It was all about like how he was going to be athletically once he added mass. And then I saw him moving around at the combine in space, and I go, oh, he hasn't lost a step at all. He's still going to be crazy explosive, crazy twitchy, because the combine doesn't tell you a lot. But when you look at the 10-yard split and you see the guys in the drill, you see the way they move more than just a 40 time. And Brian Burns looked every bit as fast as he did on tape, if not even more explosive somehow at, at 245 instead of like 225 that he was listed at Florida State. So Brian Burns is like ultimate draft crush turned NFL superstar up to this point. Probably anyone a few who others, thought, but that's Anyone who thought you, were, you thought would bust and then did? Oh, they, there always are. Uh, Josh <laughs> Allen is the big one. Oh, which, no. to be fair, was looking was looking pretty good. at Josh Allen, the quarterback, <laughs> by the way, was looking yeah. pretty good for the first yeah. two seasons. And now he's amazing because he reworks his throwing mechanics. And everyone's calling me a moron. I'm like, I didn't know he's going to rework how he threw the football. What do you want me to do? <laughs> All I can do is, is watch and then say what I think. So the product Josh Allen has kind of proven me wrong. What's I up? meant more product like someone you thought would be a bust and then actually was a bust, but... Thank you for exposing. Oh, actually, exposing. was a bus? Yes, you were right. But thank you for exposing yourself it's, here. Those ones, the, no one cares about those. <laughs> They're not memorable. They only remember if you miss. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, plenty, plenty. I'm sure. I, uh, this is going back far when I first started getting into it, and I pretty much had no idea what I was talking about, although I'm sure I was confident. Uh, it was Corey Coleman. I'm like, he sucks, and he sucked. Hey, that's... Hey, Browns, there you the go. Ends, the ends justify the means. <laughs> Yeah, he he got a Tough. short straw going to Cleveland. Well, I think it's only fitting that we end on uh, some brown slander talking about Corey Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I just really wanted to thank you for coming on with us. You know, it was an absolute pleasure. I, I I've watched some of your stuff, but I did not realize how insightful you were. And it was, it was I, really I'm <laughs> really good at tricking people. I, it's kind of backhanded. <laughs> no, no, like I don't mean it that. You as an came insult, off like such like, an idiot, but you really <laughs> are really a step above. <laughs> no, it was just Come really refreshing. He's never, coming, really back. Really He's refreshing. never coming back. He's never coming back to the Stay Out podcast after this. That's what people love to their their favorite thing is. Man, I used to watch you. I go, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad I don't in, uh, entertain you anymore. No, that was that was just like I was like, wow, like this dude really knows his stuff. So that was. That was just really refreshing. Just have you fooled. <laughs> just have me fooled. It was, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. But seriously, thank you for coming on. It was, it was uh, truly let me, a uh, Let me get a notepad. Let me write your name down. <laughs> Bladen Kirk. <laughs> on the, you're going on the list, Bladen. Not what you've list. done. I'll make, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> as long as I'm not on the list. Anyway, you, I'm putting thank you, you on my list. I'm putting you on my list. What? What did I do? On the list by association. <laughs> wow. Okay. Guilty by association. <laughs> but All right. I'm pretty sure that wraps things up for us. So we'll catch you maybe another time unless, you know, of course that list, I end up dead on the street or something. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Accidents well, happen. You know what they say. <laughs> accidents happen. But seriously, thank you. And <laughs> we'll, we'll see you around. All right. Sounds good. Appreciate you guys. Once again, big thanks to Bengal for coming on the show. Make sure you go follow him on Twitter, YouTube, etc. He posts some great content. I think we hop right back into some NBA content. We haven't talked about the NBA in a while. And you had some things to say. Both of you had some things to say about the Boston Celtics. They suck. The team <laughs> sucks. They're the 11th um, seed. should be better. Yeah. They're the oh 11 seed God. in the E. They're like three games under 500 right now. Um and I think there was a fair amount of people who had them playing for home court possibly in the playoffs. And right now they're not even going to make the play-ins. 
Um, and they've got, they've got a number of problems. Uh, one of the main ones being, and I tweeted about it, but then Jason Tatum had too many assists. So it kind of didn't make sense, but I'm going to stand by it. Um, they don't really have anyone who is like play ma- like playmaking for the team. It's like when Jason Tatum has the ball, his main directive is to, you know, create an open shot for himself. Right. And that's not a bad thing. I don't want to make this out like that type of player is bad. There's tons of players like that. They're all great. But it's the same thing with Jalen Brown. And it just feels like they have a lot of players who don't threaten all five players on the opposing defense at any given time with their ability to pass. And when you have a one and two who aren't a threat to pass heavily um, or who don't move the ball well, um, not saying that, you know, Tatum and Brown can't move the ball, but, you know, you know there's a difference between them and one of the other high level elite passers who really, you know, right. goes above and beyond. Uh, it, it it can create a really stagnant offense. It's a hard way to live creating and making tough shots. Uh, and Tatum was fantastic today. Don't get me wrong. Uh, despite them blowing a 20 point lead and losing. But um, I think that's a big reason why their offense is so inconsistent. Yeah. I Yeah, they lost to the Knicks. There are, in my opinion, two ways to be a really good basketball team. And the first one is have a generational Hall of Fame, maybe best player of the era conversation type of player. LeBron, Curry, like KD. One of those guys can carry you. You can either have a guy who's like arguably top five, Jokic, whoever you want to say, Luka, and they can carry you. That is one way to do it. There is another way to do it. And watching the Suns in 2021 unlocked this for me is like, okay, this is what a perfect basketball team looks like. Like this is what a, you don't have one guy carrying, but just like everyone working together looks like. So you can either A, have a LeBron level player or B, be the 2021 Suns who ended with the second most wins in a calendar year in the history of, of basketball. And I look at that and I look at like Chris Paul and I look at Devin Booker. Two Devin Bookers wouldn't work. Two Chris Pauls wouldn't that's work. What, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was going to bring up that exact analogy where it's like Devin yes. Booker's a great player, but if it was two of him, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense. And that is what the Celtics have. They didn't build a well-rounded team like the Suns have. And they don't have a – Tatum is good. Jalen Brown is good, but they don't have like a top five caliber player. And so if you don't have that, the way to be really good is, you know, build this like really well-rounded team with vets, with young talent, with passers, with scores, with rebound, like really well-rounded. And they just aren't. And their coaching, you know, they moved on from Brad Stevens, but I don't think the coaching has really been at a place where it probably should be. So it's there, there, like you said, there's a lot of things wrong, but they got to mirror the Suns. I'm telling you, the Phoenix Suns are the blueprint when you don't have an MVP level player. And what they have two fantastic uh, shot creators, and they yes. need more of a playmaker, I think. Now, I don't know if the solution, you, this is not us saying that the solution is like, go get Ben Simmons, because that's what a lot of people is. Yeah, I was, about, I was about to say, do you think there is a, like an obvious solution or even like, no. not even not, like a potential solution for them right no, now? No, I mean, a, a, guy, a guy who can play championship level basketball as a playmaker uh, is untouchable. Yeah. Outside of like, like who is who is being traded? Who fits the timeline? Not not yeah, Trey no Young, <laughs> not Lamelo, not I mean I, I don't I don't know. There's two first people to come to my mind, but anyone else like that, you're not giving up a dude like that if you have one. They're hard to get. There's probably more sh- guys who can create their own shot at a high level than there are who can really play make at a high level. Just off the top of my head. Um, and I think you could still make it work with Brown and Tatum. Like Tatum can move the ball better. He just doesn't do it enough. Um, but he did it well today. Like he can do it. Uh, the other thing about them is that it's also, they also are not a really well built team around those two. And if they were, they could be a lot better. Um, it's, it's far from their only problem. And you can still be very successful with the team that they have. But, uh, they're not a very good shooting team, but that doesn't seem, they don't seem to know that. It doesn't seem to stop them. Uh, they're 12th in attempted threes a game, but they're 22nd in pace. So really they shoot a higher percentage of threes than that. Um, and I think the mix of you have shot creators who want to go ISO and get jump shots, plus 
a team that shoots a lot of threes. That's not, I don't even think top 20 in three point percentage this year uh, is what creates a very hot and cold offense. It's very easy for an offense that likes jump shots to go cold. Um, Cause they, they sometimes, I, I, I wouldn't know how many points in the paint they get, but I'm willing to bet it's a little bit lower. Uh, just based on the fact that it's hard to, you know, if you're not passing a ton, it's hard to get open looks in the paint. And I think that's what happened to them today. I mean, if we want to talk about the game, it's Celtics, um, Celtics Knicks. They just went ice cold. Uh, they were sloppy. Schroeder was sloppy. I thought a little bit, at least down the stretch, the last couple of plays. And Evan Fournier had his best game ever. Yeah, it's it's interesting. One thing Jason Kidd said, um, and I don't, I'm not a big Jason Kidd fan at all, but uh, a point that he made a while back that I thought was interesting is like, we want to build our team around the two point shot instead of the three point shot because, like, yes, I know, like the three pointers are the analytical thing, but if that shot ever leaves you, the foundation is still there. If you're a really good two point shooting team. And I feel like that's something kid, I think has his many issues as a head coach, but I thought that that was like, I, I kind of followed the logic there where it's like, there's a foundation there that is solid. And then you kind of add the other things as like spice to it. That really puts you over the top. And the Celtics just kind of seem to be all the spice and like not much of the, solid solid foundation and they're a team without a really strong identity like you said like they think they're good at this one thing but they're not really all that good at the anything and it's like who is the veteran leadership is it smart is it this new coach is it like who is going to be that is it is horford on that team i can't even remember at, at this point what team yes, he's on yes, but like on yes he is he is on the so it's like maybe him i guess but i i don't know they're just like kind of aimless they're aimless and they don't have a foundation of like really good basketball and they're just not well built. And this is the lesson you learn is yeah. Playmaking very important. Yeah. It's basically what it's about to are, the are 17th in points per, uh, in, in the paint, which I guess is not awful, awful, awful. Yeah. Um, but it's like, and they didn't shoot bad, terrible from three overall the day, but it's like, this team is 20. They're shooting 45 threes in a game. I mean, there's just, launching them um and i, I don't yeah. know it, it I was just, like they I were gonna they go were into the season often. yeah it's like they went into the season with this mentality that we're just like we are gonna light teams up we're gonna be the warriors we are go we have these high level scores and we're just gonna outpace them and that's just or we're just gonna out shoot them threes are more than twos we've got these dynamic scores you know come come to our building and get lit up and then that just hasn't happened and they're now directionless do you see do you think that's a scenario in which it just hasn't worked this time or do they just not have the pieces playing it's to it's do it? it's a mix it's both um on the one hand like yeah you can make a good team with jalen brown and jason tatum i confidently believe that um but that's it, you know their their play styles are not a perfect combination or whatever um so it, it's it's a little bit of both if they built better around them we probably wouldn't be talking about um them but i do think long term it's gonna be tough i mean neither neither of their top two players their top two i mean guys in usage rate i'm assuming are jalen brown and jason tatum neither of them average even four assists a game and if you're gonna go find a championship team where the the top guys do that i mean it's like I would assume it's never happened yeah. where uh, I mean, maybe, maybe it has, but even, even Kobe was averaging five, you know, even Giannis is averaging six, even guys who you don't consider real, real, real passers or guys who are, you know, like a big or, or Kobe who's notorious for not passing still moved the ball more than that. And maybe but, that's not I really think in that scenario. In, in that scenario, aren't those guys just like such dominant superstars that you draw so much attention that you're, you're just well, bound to get pass outlets. Yeah, and that, that's also part of it. That's also part of it. But those Jalen Brown and Jason, I mean, Tatum can get some double teams. Um, I just think... Yeah, I think like Giannis, I, Giannis is getting more than double teamed. <laughs> well, yeah. They're, Jason Tatum won't ever be Giannis, I can safely say. <laughs> um, but I, I think... I think either the solution is you got to mix it up a little bit. You, you got to give them more spacing, more better surrounding pieces. You got to get them to move the ball more because I don't believe it's an inability to move the ball. 
completely, at least not to this level. Maybe they'll never be elite passers or whatever, but it could be better. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, then I would look to make some sort of move to get somebody in there who really can play make at a high level as a number one or number two option. Yeah. And I think that, that person my is last option. I really like them. I do. I think Jalen Brown getting moved, honestly, would be pretty, I'd maybe a little bit more willing to do that than you, Matt. But I mean, you've got this, I think a supernova, a guy who is capable of going supernova in Tatum. I'm not moving him. If it just, if this whole year goes by and they've got, you know, half a season still to figure this out and it can't happen. And they've been together for a while now, Tatum and, 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 and Brown. So if they just if the spark isn't there and it doesn't look like they'll work out, I'm I'm not gonna bang my head against the wall. I'm gonna get a better supporting cast by maybe moving Brown. I would I would heavily consider it. I, that's that's where I'm at with him. Is like I would heavily consider it. I but I I feel you to an extent, but then it's like the idea of tra- trading Jalen Brown and then what trades there actually would be. Yeah, I think are two different things. I'm yeah, not doing true. a Ben Simmons deal. And then it's like, what what move does not net them a player who is just straight up worse? Yeah. I don't know. Very draft picks f- I guess- and you hope you develop a really good playmaker. Because like you said, there aren't that many good playmakers. So I guess you got to find one maybe through the draft or, you know, a Cade Cunningham would be awesome. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to find Cade Cunningham. It's very hard like, to find. You're just draft a generational talent. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's difficult. Maybe well, a guy like... If Chris Paul, like Kyle Lowry, maybe this offseason, like one of these old guards that is like crafty. That's what I, I don't know who well, might. I don't, I don't. Yeah. You know, I, I know one guy who's uh, known for passing the ball. Um, ben Simmons might be on the move. <laughs> not Ben Simmons. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no. You might not even have to give up Jalen Brown to get him. If you uh, yeah, true. look in Russell Westbrook's way. In Russell <laughs> Westbrook's direction. <laughs> That'll fix it. Oh, that'll God. make things better. Surely, surely that'll <laughs> surely that'll solve all so, of your problems. What we're saying, and I think Theo agrees on this, is that uh, Al Horford plus whatever else you need to make it work for Westbrook uh, because he passes, and that's the only thing that the yeah. Celtics need. Known, to known generational playmaker Russell Westbrook, who always makes the right decision and and is very triple crafty double with the king, <laughs> triple double king, triple triple double. King. Can I say this? I think Russ is a bum. I I literally have thought this for a while. <laughs> I know that I Jesus. I was a Jesus. little bit. I don't I know. He for me. I I gave him when he went to the Lakers. I set it aside a little bit. And I'm like, man, he his. I guess he is a really athletic, good guard and. Like LeBron always seems to make things work, and AD is going to be good. I, I I was mistaken. He's he's a pl- I Russell Westbrook slander for well, has, me. Has AD like also just like not been? Yeah, good this year? yeah. He's played like bad. He has. He's been played bad. bad. But Russell <laughs> Ru- throughout the history of me watching basketball, Russell Westbrook slander has never aged poorly. It's 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 such a fruitful agenda to push because he just screws up so often like it's not like like if you're pushing a lebron an anti-lebron agenda that's got to be exhausting like he always does cool shit but like (laughs) westbrook's it's the easiest agenda to push in the world because i've never regretted it i've never been like oh i I," like if you're a westbrook fan i don't know how they do it if any westbrook fans are listening you are braver than the marines because i (laughs) couldn't do the job that you do for any player that I like, if it got to that point, I'd be, I'd be out of there, but you continue to push it. And I don't know how, and I salute you, but it couldn't be me. Defending Russell Westbrook harder than defending Baker Mayfield. (laughs) My thing with the Westbrook hate is that there's maybe, it lacks nuance. Um, And I don't disagree with it fully, but um, it either seems like, oh, he's the worst. He's like legitimately bad. Um, in the regular season, which I don't, I don't agree with, but he does struggle in the playoffs. I, my my big thing with him is that he is okay. He creates a lot of offense, but he's bad with spacing. So if you're going to have him on your team and deal with that spacing, you need to have other people space out. And he's just been on so many teams that don't do that. So many th- the Lakers they just did not build around Westbrook at all. So of course it's not working. Or the 2016 Thunder. People try to find who do we blame, KD or Westbrook. The spacing on that team, that team 
was playing like Steven Adams and Enos Cantor. They had like three guys who couldn't shoot in an eight man rotation in game seven of the Western Conference finals against Golden State. So I, I feel like Westbrook has his flaws, but he could also have a ring right now if there were some different team building going on around him and people, you know, working with his flaws a little bit more and the narrative around him would be very different. I would agree, but it's like, dude, I don't want my best player to be hitting shots off the side of the backboard. Like I see it happen way too yeah. often. Like, the low lights, the low lights are tough. If the low lights are us. just, it's like, Oh my God, dude. It's like you're an NBA player. And it's like this shot just hit the top corner. Like you just break this must they have call, layup. They call them West Brick for a reason. I swear to God, it it's just bad. tough to swallow. It's just tough to swallow because he needs to be in this perfect situation. Otherwise he's, kind of like a black hole and it's like it's, i don't it's, it's almost you know who it's kind of like it's kind of like DeRozan. that's who it's kind of like DeRozan for a long time struggled in the playoffs he looks worse and i w- we haven't seen him in the playoffs do better but i'm willing to bet that he will because he has spacing and if you go back and you look at those raptors teams that he used to play on uh, spacing was really messed up and then you have a guy who is not a good three-point shooter and that is easy for defenses to game plan around when the spacing isn't there. And all of a sudden he's having a career year when everyone else on the team can shoot and he can go, well, not everyone else, but you know, the spacing's really great. There's a stretch five on the team. That's not a coincidence. It's interesting that Billy Donovan is the coach of the bulls. And he was also the coach of the thunder. If I am correct there. Right. Yes. I think so. So yeah. Yeah. I think so too. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, Westbrook, DeRozan, Billy Donovan, what they'll do in the playoffs. But yeah, I agree. I, I, I do kind of agree with that where, where DeRozan kind of had to beat similar alleg- allegations. So we'll see. But De- DeFrozen, uh, the DeFrozen allegations. <laughs> but uh, Well, while we're baller. talking about pitiful, pitiful things that are happening in sports, we should talk about the fact that people are saying that the Raiders and Chargers should both just opt to tie in week 18 of the NFL season if the if. Colts lose to the Jaguars. And no. the reason they're saying that is because the Colts and Jaguars play at one and the Raiders and Chargers play on the night game. So it's like, Mm-mm. oh, they would know. They could tie and both make the playoffs. Mm-mm. That is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. Why How would you, you know? opt? It was like, oh, we can both make the playoffs. What's wrong with you? It doesn't. I mean, not only are you, it's not like you're not playing for anything. You are. Because um, it affects the seating. Uh, but also, how could you possibly trust the other team to do that? Because if <laughs> I was if I was the other team, I would be like, yeah, sure. If the other team is going to get the ball first. Like if I'm the Raiders and the Chargers get the ball first, I'd be like, yeah, we should all knee it out when we have the ball for sure. And steal a possession. Or I would kneel out the entire game in the night. When I get the ball last, I'll try to go get a field goal and win it. But it's, it, or do you just like four? You can't even just like forfeit the game straight up. And like Roger Goodell is not letting that slide. He's not going to be like, that's a good one, guys. You purposely <laughs> ended the game. It took 45 minutes and it was over. Yeah. They're also, not let- they're division rivals. Fuck those guys. We are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Fuck, there's no fuck killer instinct in the game there's anymore. Where, yeah. It. Like you, these, we're playing the blood sport. We're, we're the modern day gladiators, like putting your body on the line to like, this is simulated war that we're talking about with this sport here. And you have an opportunity to finish off your hated rivals. And you're just going to be like, let's need out and exactly. both make the playoffs. Hell no. You're going to lose in the first round. If you're soft exactly. like that. All right. You're going to lose no, in the first round. If you're soft like that. You got to kill them. You got to kill them. Look, it takes a lot for me to be against a tie. But if anything, (laughs) you shouldn't do this because it ruins the integrity of the tie. This is not. It has to genuinely come about. You can't try to tie. That defeats the purpose of tying. That's such a Seinfeld. (laughs) That's such a Seinfeld thing. It just it destroys the integrity of the tie. This is like such a. It does, and the game would. I mean, it would just be stupid. It wouldn't make any sense. So, no, it would would be be funny for like one drive, and then we'd be like, "Oh, they're really." Now it would be funny if they're both trying to win and they end up tying anyway. That That would be be that would be wonderful. That would be a real. That would be hilarious. A it team, would also be a team funny. getting screwed out it'll, of the no, playoffs it'll, it'll because be, a game be, ends in a tie is awesome. That would be the coolest thing It'll be, thing it'll that be could funny happen. 
when the Colts beat the Jaguars and then the Raiders and Chargers tie. That's when it'll be funny. But what if any, it gets to overtime? The, would you would you consider kneeling it out if you play the whole game? You really try. It gets to overtime. Now there and then, there is a point where would you, you would be like, if you're the like for instance, if you're the Raiders and you have it in overtime with five minutes, how aggressive are you? I might. Do, I don't know. We can run the clock. <laughs> like I'm trying to move the ball because you need first downs. But at the same time, it's like if the clock runs out, the clock runs out. It's all good. Yeah. If we both well, make it, the, especially who would be the higher seed? Well, I don't know exactly well, how that, that would only, work. But that only they only Chargers both make the playoffs the if, the, if the Colts. Okay. If the Colts yes. lose. Well, we're we're we're. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. This assuming is all hypothetical. The Jaguars all beat the Colts. Assuming that assuming that Trevor Lawrence throws more than two touchdowns in the past ten weeks. Um, <laughs> like, I think the I, other inter- the other interesting thing about week eighteen to me is Cooper Cup's desire or or his 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 path to beating Calvin Johnson's all time receiving yards in a season record. He needs one hundred thirty six to do it. I think so. That's mm-hmm. the one thing that we got to watch out for. And I think overall, the football community would rather Calvin Johnson have this record than Cooper Cup. And Mm -hmm. that's where I'm at. Like Cooper Cup, I've kind of come around to the idea where he's not just a slot merchant. Not anybody could do it. You know, he's really good at a lot of different things. The the one thing he's lacking is like maybe the high-end athleticism, the deep burn speed that some of these elite guys have. But outside of that, he's got kind of everything. So I'm I've come around to the idea of Cup breaking the record, but I'm still I'd still rather Calvin have it. You know, I one thing that I I feel bad for him a little bit. He he, I saw that quote he had where he was like, "Yeah, you know, it's it's not the same because it's one more game." Now he should be like, "Yeah, I'm going to go get the record." He's got a he's that's not how receivers are supposed to be. He should be like, "I'm the greatest," and Calvin, I'm I'm going to beat his record. You know, <laughs> he should I, he should people, say that he's better than Calvin Johnson. That's what he should. He's say. not going to beat the record because I mean, he has that mentality. He's going to fall short because he's he's going to intend, he's go, he's going to intentionally not get the record. <laughs> wow. What has happened to this game, man? No killer. In, they they're purposely tying. They don't want okay, records no, serious, anymore. Serious question. Serious question. Do you think Cooper Cup would opt to let Calvin keep the record? Hell no, God no! Jesus oh, Christ, God, he, he would be. He does that. That's not like an honorable move. It's like so He's lame. A- that would be like the <laughs> lamest possible. Like, oh my God, this guy. Calvin won't have the record anymore, but people will still be able to look back with the context that he 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 played a, f- a one less game. We can just yeah. remember that that happened. He doesn't actually have to have the record. Um, That's fair. You don't need to. Yeah, like you I, don't need to fix it. I, I, I think Cooper the, should go and get it. He should just go and get it. And he deserves it. And honestly, like, I don't know. It's just like, it, it's going to be a battle of Fred Warner and, and Cooper Cup. That's going to be the battle. It's just, you know, I, I when in doubt, cheer for whatever would make Twitter have the biggest meltdown. And undoubtedly, <laughs> that's Cooper Cup breaking the record. So that's what I'm going for. Theo um, was talking to us earlier about how the, the dialogue on Twitter is going to basically revolve around how Cooper Cup breaks the record. And if it's just like a drag route that he's wide open on, then Twitter will have a meltdown. But if he actually does something really cool, then like people will respect it. So I'm interested to see how he does I hope it's, I hope it's busted that. coverage then. <laughs> um, just busted coverage, just like walks in for a 50-yard touchdown. <laughs> I don't but, know. Um, I, I, and same, you know, I, I feel like it's wrong not to cheer for records to be broken unless it's like your guy. Um the same since I'm cheering for TJ Watt. I guess that's, I guess. The, oh, TJ Watt. Absolutely. I'm a Brown fan. I'm going to root for TJ Watt to break the sack record. In the words of JJ Watt, go get the record kid. Like, come on. <laughs> no, but, uh, I, th- I think that kind of wraps things up for us. Wouldn't you agree, Matthew? It does. Well, I don't think, I don't think there's a single episode where we haven't said this wraps. I think that wraps things up for us. That's our, our go-to that's kind of our, transition. Our, that's our go-to transition to the outro. Does that wrap things up for well, us? Well, that does wrap things up for us. As always, tons and tons of content coming to win all platforms. We'll be back. Whoa, 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 when will we be back? Sunday, Monday. Monday to recap week 18. That's so weird to think about that there's like another week of football. Don't miss out on all the great content coming your way on all platforms. As always, tons and tons of content coming your way. Oh, don't forget to do the uh, stay hot shout outs, call in, 
you know, during Sunday. I know a lot of the games are kind of meaningless for some of you. Uh, most people are either in the playoffs or eliminated from the playoffs. But if you're having a bad time or a good time, call in. Tell us how you're doing about, you know, your NFL team or NBA team for that matter. But as always, from Corn Boy, Gambling Addiction Boy, and of course, Lemon Boy, we'll catch you on the flip flop.